Hi guys, welcome back to Cam Counseling Minus the Bull with Candice. So we're going to do a video today um, titled Counselors or Counselors in Training Like Me. Um, should you go to training? I keep butchering. <laughs> keep butchering. Should you go to counseling? So I um, did a lot of videos about, um, you know, this love, wealth, and healing, you know, for clients. But now I want to talk to the counselors. Um, so, yeah. And it's just going to be a good video um, just to put in perspective from your um, counselor, your counselor in training. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a topic for today. Let's start with our check-in. So, our check-ins, if you're new, is to um, describe how you're feeling. Basically, your mood um, and the dance move and lyrics, emojis, um, just any expressive creative art below as long as it's positive and as long as it is appropriate um so yeah my dance move for today didn't think about it as usual um so it's going to be <laughs> whatever okay so anyway so let's jump right into this video so counselors counselors just training should you benefit from going to counseling? And then I'm just going to strictly speak from me today. Um, so definitely that answer is a yes. Um, I'm going to say that it can only benefit you from going to counseling. And I will always say that to um, counselors and trainers, to um, counselors, to um even clients, right? Um, because if you're going to counseling, that means you're going to learn something different than what you've been doing, or you're going to get the support that maybe you do not have, or you're going to be able to talk about some things that maybe you did not want to talk about before. So, yeah, it's several different benefits. That's just a few. Um but with counselors so with me and my school experience so like i said um i've got my master's in clinical mental health and counseling and part of those requirements was that we actually had to have like a group um counseling course whereas we were the students were the group so we were the participants of the group counseling and for me that's really was a crucial time for me because that's the time when i started opening up to like my classmates and my professors and i used i really used that opportunity to um start this journey that i've started with myself of love growth and healing um and i just really opened up about my childhood and kind of gotten an understanding of who I am today because what happened in the past and who I am today because who I want to be in the future. So yeah, so that was the first requirement. So we took like a group course, group counseling course. Um, and I just really used that time to bond with my classmates and to um, practice um, this love, growth and healing. So that was like the first eye-opening experience for me. Um, and then as well as we also have this class called pre-practicum where um we're students and we are counseling our other um colleagues right um the other students so you can volunteer to um get counseling done from this counselor in training and that happens to be your classmate um, or it can be like, um, extra, extra credit or things of that nature. So you basically, um, help your classmate by being a client to your classmate. Um, and while they're practicing these, um, techniques with you, they're practicing all of the listening and asking, um, open-ended questions 
uh, practicing reflecting, summarizing, you know, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, so that was the school, those were my school requirements and I definitely agree. Like that is so needed, both of them, okay? Um, if you're interested in being a counselor, um, use those experiences like I did, like really, <laughs> really use those experiences to learn about yourself and some of your bias that you have, some of the judgments you have, um, because that's the time you want to start letting that go. Um, going on a little farther, I did share this in my first video that in my internship, I ended up going to some counseling sessions. So what had happened particularly was um, my intern site supervisor suggested that I go um, because I wasn't comfortable with going to do like in-home counseling. And for me, it was everything to do with my childhood. And it was me that was creating these healthy boundaries for myself um, that made me uncomfortable with um, doing like home-based things with people that I may not know and um, with, um, you know, um, challenges that I'm unaware of by walking into someone else's home. So, um, I went to, I took the opportunity, I went to my school, I did the counseling sessions there, and it really helped me to process my thoughts and to also um, help with my stress level because as a student, you're trying to balance it all, you're trying to do your homework, you're trying to do your deadlines, you're trying to be... Um, there for everybody else, you be there for yourself, you have to pay your bills, you have to... <sighs> it's stressful as far as financially doing the process, especially doing an internship when you really can't work, but you still have bills, so it, it's just a lot, guys. Um, so my stress load was up here. Um, so that was another time for me where I had a lot of eye-opening experiences I went in there like, hey, maybe I do need some counseling. Maybe my childhood is still coming up. Um, but it really turned out that these, this boundary I made for myself was reassured by the person I was speaking to. And she was, she kind of agreed that, um, you know, this boundary I created for myself is um, a healthy boundary. So that's where the healthy boundaries video comes from. <laughs> You know, I have inspiration from several different places. Okay, so that was that. So then when you start to do your like your internship or you're starting to work in the field and you're starting to get clients and you listen to all of these people opening up and trusting you with their information. If you're not careful, you can experience some counter transformance. And that's the counselor um, feeling these emotions and on about your clients, right? Pushing them on your clients, your emotions kind of soar. So they kind of identify that as, let's say you have a client and your client didn't show up for the day, um, for the session, and then you're like really mad and you're like um, just worrying why didn't your client show up for today? So that's an example of counter transference. Um yeah but like just imagine talk to your friend and then um your cousin calls and you know spills their guts and then you know your friend calls you back and you know talks about some things that's going on with them and then you know by the end of the day you're like "Ooh, that's a lot of energy right this is really a lot of energy so yeah um, as a counselor, you have to be conscious of how you are, well, you're not taking home these stories um, because it's very easy to, right? So you have to know how to um, be engaging with your clients, the being, um, but making sure you're not taking work home. And that's really any field, right? 
and then you know if you're really not too careful sometimes this can lead to a burnout um because it's a stressful field period um it's a lot of ethics that are put in place it's a lot of paperwork it's a lot of working with different entities so you might be working with the school you may be working with parents you may be working with um you know the private office you're at um just so many different settings right um so it's possible to feel the term of burnout um where you're just really you know it just takes a toll on you i would say that um and this could be any field like i said um it comes to a point where you have to do your leisure activities and um things like that to um you know get your energy um and back to feeling yourself so you have to be careful for burnouts and then my last point here is well, let's say you do hit burnout um it's important to know about self-care so yeah you may be aware of self-care we all preach it i preach it i practice it though um but it wouldn't hurt to have um a different perspective it wouldn't hurt to have additional tips that you may not be aware of um and sometimes you forget um, about your self-care so sometimes you just need that reminder like hey you've been working hard <laughs> do your self-care okay take some time for you think about yourself do some things you like to do um, just to really keep your moods your energy back up because um, you have to be a good counselor for others but you have to be a good counselor for yourself and I always say that <laughs> I always find a way to throw that in there somewhere so yeah guys um, I just wanted to stress that yes Counselors definitely need counseling. We're the advocates, right? So we're already telling you guys, like, hey, counseling is beneficial. And here's why. But um, with counselors and trainers and counselors ourselves, um, we need it too, right? Um, we're hearing these stories day in, day out. Um, we're in a stressful field. Um, burnout is very real. And then sometimes, you know, you, you, you try to go above and beyond because most of the situations, you're gonna have to go above and beyond, you know, for um, your clients. So sometimes you may remember that it's great to do that, but you also have to take time for yourself. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Um, this is just a, gonna be under, so I created a playlist. So this is gonna go under, let's just talk. And this is gonna be, um, yeah you know just from a different perspective so we've been looking kind of through it through a lens of love growth and healing you know within ourselves but now we're going to think about you know um the next person right your counselor and training and um you know just being mindful of everyone around you guys um so yeah thanks for watching like share subscribe hit the subscribe subscribe button guys put your check-ins below um of how you're feeling get also put in um your feedback right um i'll see you next time and watch this in screen check out the new playlist i put together um i put everything in categories guys <laughs> see ya